Hey, Shalom Israel. Back again with another 15 minutes with the captains. Today's topic, we're going to go into where is my God? All right, that's the question. Where is his face? Where is God? I want to see him. All right, so that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm Captain Tazawan, and to my right, Officer Baru. All right, let's get into it. How do you know your God? How is it that you get close to the Lord? Because we all believe we have a personal relationship with him, but how do you get closer to him? Let's read that. Matthew chapter six, chapter three, excuse me, verse six. Come on. The book of Matthew chapter three and verse six. We're going to talk a little bit about John the Baptist. All right. John and how he got people that he baptized closer to the father. What was going on? Read. And were baptized of him and Jordan, confessing their sins. Those that came to John the Baptist came to him doing what? Confessing their sins. Confessing their sins. They confessed their sins, not just to John, not right. to John, but the confessing of the sins were given unto the most high God, the God of this Bible. So you got to understand what is sin. Right. All right. First John chapter three, verse four. What were they confessing? What were they confessing? What was the sin that they had within themselves that they confessed to God? All right. The book of John <clears throat> chapter three and verse four. We're going to keep in mind, where is my God? How do you seek God? How do you seek his face? Let's see. Read. Whosoever committeth sin mm -hmm. transgresseth also the law. So the sins that they were confessing was them transgressing of God's law. Some of the sins they might have been in was probably adultery, stealing, right. yeah. murder. Some of them might have been in the sins of uh, extortion. bearing false witness, extortion, worshiping of other gods, yep. things of this nature. These are the things that they were confessing to the Lord. I'm not going to do it no more. Right. All right. So God, he, Christ sent, God sent his son to die for your sins, not so that you can continue in sins, that you can confess them and forsake them. Right. Let's see what happens when you sin. Proverbs chapter eight, verse 35. Come on. Proverbs eight thirty-five. Are you offending me when you sin? Mm -hmm. Are you offending your cash, your dogs, the people that, uh, uh, live around you? It affects them, right. but are you uh, are you uh, held accountable to those individuals in particular? The one who sets up these laws is the most high God of Israel, the God of this Bible, all right? So who is your transgression or your error truly against? Read that, Proverbs 8, verse 35. The book of Proverbs, chapter 8 and verse 35. Mm -hmm. For whoso findeth me, findeth life. If you find the Bible, these words of this book, you find life, the laws of life, how to live, read. And shall obtain favor of the Lord. And you shall attain favor from the Lord. Everybody want favor, but don't really know how to receive that favor. Read on. But he that sinneth against me. The ones that you sin, the one that you sin against is the most high God, the Lord of this Bible. All right. So when John was baptizing those that were separate from the Lord, that didn't know the Lord, they were separating themselves through their sin. All right. So you want to find out how you know the Lord. It says, but he that sinneth against me wrong with his own soul read on all they that hate me love death and if you hate the lord you love death from that let's get it we already read john first john chapter three mm -hmm. verse four is uh the breaking of god's laws is uh sin all right that's what sin is so the things that they were doing was this the laws trying contrary towards god's commandments right. all right we mentioned those many commandments if you eat pork all right, you not according to Leviticus chapter eleven verse seven, you're not supposed to be eating swine's flesh. All right, that's the sin according to the Bible. You men that got beards on your faces, you should not be shaving them off. Tattoos, you should not be doing them when you come to repentance anymore. All right, those are some of the sins that our people were confessing. All right, from that, um, <coughs> let's see, how did God separate from us? Isaiah chapter fifty nine verse two. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59 and verse 2. So this is the thought right now. This is what the Bible says. This is the program of the world that you live in right now. If you sin against God, he hides his face from you. And when he hides his face from you, he curses you. Mm -hmm. And he's going to be the one that you go to when you're in the midst of all your sin. And it goes south when it goes wrong. All right. So you don't want to know what God is, but you're still in the midst of your sins that you have not yet confessed yet. Read that. Come on. But your iniquities mm -hmm. have separated between you and your God. So that's why everybody thinks they have a personal relationship with God right mm -hmm. now. No, 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 no. You have an idea of God right. and the blessings that you receive are not from him. It's just to preserve you until you repent. Bring it on. Let that soak in a little bit. 
So the time that you're living in right now, we got to realize if you're not keeping God's commandments in the faith of Christ, God has separated himself from you because of your own sins. Read that verse again. Come on. But your iniquities mm -hmm. have separated between you and your God. Your iniquities have separated between you and your God. Read. Come on. And your sins have hid his face from you. And your sins, those same sins that those that was following after John the Baptist to be baptized, those same sins that they confess was separating and making God hide himself from them. So if you want to seek God, if you want to if you want God to look down upon you and bless you in your tribulation and in glory and in your own blessing, you have to keep his commandments. Read that part again, come on. And your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear. So it's not because God got an attitude and he just don't want to deal with you right, right. now, it's something personal, it's because of your actions mm -hmm. that God has not blessed you how you think you th deserve. You got to walk your life thinking that what should I do to serve my God? Not what God should do for you. Right. And that's the concept that we have in this world, that we can do anything we want to do. And the Lord God, Jesus of, of heaven and earth is going to bless us. All right. That's not how this world is. That's not how God set up things. You have to acknowledge your offense towards him. Let's get that. He, um, Hosea real quick. Hosea chapter five, verse 15. So one of the steps in which God will turn himself back to you. All right, you got to re realize and acknowledge your own sins first. Read that. The book of Hosea, <laughs> chapter 5 and verse 15. Mm -hmm. I will go and return to my place. This is the Lord speaking. He said, I will go and return to my place. Because you are in your midst of your wickedness. I don't want to deal with you right now. Read on. Till they acknowledge their offense. Till what? Till they acknowledge their offense. So that time in which you acknowledge your offense towards your God is when he will return to you. And what else? Come on. And seek my face. How do you seek God's face? We're going to stop right there. How do you seek God's face? Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 36. I believe it's verse 14 or 7, 16. Excuse me. Isaiah 34 verse 16. Excuse me. The book of Isaiah, chapter 34, <clears throat> verse 16. Right. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord. So it says, and when they seek me, they shall find me early. Right? So how do you seek the Lord? Read that part again. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So you read the Bible. Mm -hmm. You read your Bible every single day. What we do, right? We do four chapters a day at least. All right? As much as you can, whatever opportunity you have of free time, Read the Bible. This is how you seek your God. And once you do the things that are in the Bible, he starts to turn his face back to you. Read that part again. Come on. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. So where is God? Well, he's been in front of us the whole time. Read. Come on. Hosea chapter 5 and verse 15. Right. I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense mm -hmm. and seek my face right. and their affliction. They will seek me early. Right. Read uh, Isaiah chapter 45, <clears throat> verse 15. The book of Isaiah chapter 45 and verse 15. Verily thou art now, a... Now, before we read this, we already understand what would make God hide himself from you. He ain't no cow. God is not no cow. He's, right. a, he's a God of war. But you turn, he turns himself from you when he sees that he can't deal with you as he wants to because you're not in your righteousness, you're in your sin. So he cuts you off from himself. Read that verse, come on. Verily thou art a God that hideth thyself, mm -hmm. O God of Israel, the Savior. That's the God that we're talking about. Read on, verse 16. They shall be ashamed and also confounded, mm -hmm. all of them. They shall go to confusion together that are makers of idols. Those that are makers of idols that worship other gods, all right, how do you worship these other gods? You worship these other, god, these other gods by your celebrations that yep, you keep. Your actions, yep. Your actions. When you celebrate Thanksgiving and Christmas, you go out and serve these other gods in your actions. And from these actions, you do evil things. Some of you all will rob people just to have that Christmas gift, Damn. thinking you're doing righteousness. Some of you all will go out and get these gifts that are set up. God never set them up in put them under a Christmas tree. God never said to do that. New Year's, you go out and drink and revel and have a New Year's revolution and end up having a New Year's baby. Yeah. That's what happens, all right? When you worship these other gods from that, this is why. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 10, verse six. <coughs> Book of Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse six. Mm -hmm. Folly is set in a great dig in great dignity. The scripture says folly is sin. Sin is held in great dignity, read. 
And the rich sit in a in low place. And the rich sit in low places. Let me show you who the rich are. John James chapter two verse five. He said the rich sit in low places. The rich sit in low places. What is that going into? James two and five. Yes. The book of James chapter two and verse five. Mm -hmm. Hearken, my beloved brethren, have not God chosen the poor of this world? Rich in faith because you think since you are reveling, you're doing all these celebrations, you think you live in the good life. Yo, YOLO, I do what I want to, I go to the club and all that. But the but the poor of this world who you consider not to be having fun, because your ideal of fun is really sin. Right. And you're separating yourself from your God. Your ideal is your ideal is fun is really sin. I'm saying have good time, but we have good times in righteousness right. as Israel. All right. It says those that are considered poor of this world are rich in what? In faith. In faith in the belief of this Bible. Because we know how to get our God to turn back to us to see us again. To turn his face to us by keeping his commandments. Read on. Is that it? Come on, sir. And heirs of the kingdom, mm -hmm. which he have promised to them that love him. Because we know that this life that we live, we're going to inherit a heavenly party. That's right. In the kingdom of heaven when we keep these commandments. When at this time that we're living right now. He turned his say, his face back to us because we've kept his commandments. All right? Give me that. James chapter six, 5, verse 16. The book of James <clears throat> chapter 5 and verse 16. So, Israel, please understand and witness. You got to understand. Where's your God? He's been right in front of us. The Bible says, seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. You read about him. Then you read about what he's done to our ancestors, to your forefathers. All right? And you do those things accordingly, thus saith the Lord. All right? You don't, you don't, you don't uh, do the celebrations anymore, but right. you keep the celebrations that God gave you. Mm -hmm. Passover, the Sabbath day, etc. The new moons, etc. Read that. Come on. Confess your faults one to another mm -hmm. and pray one for another. So confess your faults one of another and pray one for another. That's the purpose of you confessing your faults. All right. It's so that I see you in the transgression of sin. I'm praying that you get through it. Yeah. All right. Read. Come on. That ye may be healed. <laughs> The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Read that again. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So right now we're going into the steps on which how you get back to God so he can turn his face back to you, all right? Keeping of the commandments. Give me that real quick. Sirach chapter 17, verse 22 down to 27. And I got one more scripture after this. The book of Sirach chapter 17, verse 21. Right. But the Lord being gracious and knowing his workmanship, neither left nor forsook them, mm -hmm. but spared them. He spared us. Read. The alms of a man is a signet with him, mm -hmm. and he will keep the good deeds of a man as the apple of the eye. Read on. Come on. And giveth repentance to his sons and daughters. Right. The Lord will look upon those that, uh, that turn from their transgression and bless their children. Read on. Come on. Afterwards, he will rise up and reward them and render their recompense upon their heads. Mm -hmm. But unto them that repent and granted them return and comforted those that failed in patience. Read. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. This is how you come back to the Lord. Remember it said earlier, until they acknowledge their offense. Mm -hmm. When you acknowledge what you've done contrary to your God, that's when he will return unto you. But you got to do it first. You the first step. Right. You got to repent because the Lord is good. Mm -hmm. The Lord, he's righteous. He ain't nothing wrong with him. What? You got to accustom yourself to the most high. What's up? What they say, you uh, you waiting on God, <clears throat> but God waiting on you. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's what it is right there. <laughs> He waiting on you to get yourself right. He waiting on you to put the cigarette down, right. sister, brother. He waiting on you to throw away the weed. He waiting on you to stop the drug addiction. He's waiting on you to stop the murder, the hatred. He's waiting on you to put the pork down, brother. Put the pork down, sister. Sister, he's waiting on you to put on a dress and take off the pants. Brother, he's waiting on you to humbly take off the dress and put on pants. Right. All right? That's what repentance is when you turn it back to your God truthfully. Read that again. Verse 25. Verse 25. Mm -hmm. Return unto the Lord and forsake thy sins. Read. Make thy prayer before his face and offend less. Offend less because it's a process. Right. All right. It's a process. It's not overnight. You're not just going to do it all overnight and you all righteous. No, it's a process in which you offend less towards your God. Read on. 
Turn again to the Most High mm -hmm. and turn away from iniquity. So when you turn to the Lord, he's going to turn himself back to you. That's where your God is. He's been in front of you the whole time. He ain't never forsook you. He, has, he spared you at least by giving you his word. All right. Galatians chapter four, verse nine. Last scripture. The book of Galatians, chapter 4 <clears throat> and verse 9. Right. But now, after that ye have known God, or rather are known of God. There was a point in which the Galatians repented from their sins and worshiping of idols right here in the history. They went, they went after other gods, and now they were, what is it said again? Read it again. But now, after that, ye, ye have known God. They, there was a time period in which, when we still do right now, we know God. You know God how? By keeping of his commandments. Stop that right there. This is how you know God. First John chapter 3, I think it's, oh, chapter 2, verse 1, I believe. How do you know the Lord? How do you know God? How do you know your creator? How do you know him? Where is he? <laughs> the book of... Is that what First John chapter 2 and verse 4, right. uh, verse 3. Verse 3, here we go. And hereby we do know that we know him. This is how you know that you know God. Read, how do you know him? If we keep his commandments. Why is every instance of you getting closer to the Lord or the kingdom of heaven or repentance, the common denominator is what? Keeping of God's commandments. Yep. Read that verse again. And hereby we do know that we know him. Mm -hmm. If. We keep his commandments. If you keep God's commandments, that's how you know him. Read on. Come on. He that saith I know him and keepeth not his commandments is a liar. And what? And the truth is not in him. The truth is not in you. If you say you love God and you keep his commandments, but you're still breaking his commandments right. by eating pork, mm -hmm. which is a law. Christ never ate pork. So if you're Christ, like if you're a Christian, you don't do the things Christ didn't do. All right. Plain and simple. You do the things that Christ did. Christ never ate pork. You never read about it. All right. What doctrine is that? Christ never celebrated Christmas. And they say that's when his birth was. Right. No. The second, uh, uh, his second birthday, he didn't have no tree, put no kiss under right. it for himself. What, what is all of that? He didn't know who <laughs> that going Santa Claus was. We got to bring common sense to our lives, brothers and sisters, and realize getting back to God and keeping the commandments is the only thing that matters. Back to that in Galatians chapter four and finish that off in verse nine. Book of Galatians 4 and 9. Mm -hmm. But now, after that ye have known God, mm -hmm. or rather are known of God. This is how now you're known of God. When you can repent and keep his commandments. Read on. How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements whereunto, whereunto ye desire again to be in bondage. Read that verse one more time. <clears throat> But now, after that ye have known God, mm -hmm. or rather are known of God. So now you're known of the Lord, read on, when you keep his commandments in the faith of Christ, read on. How turn ye again to the weak and beggarly elements? Don't go back. Don't go back to the weak and beggarly elements of what? The world, read on. When Don't go back to the Christmas. Right. Don't go back to the uh, false celebrations and worshiping of other gods and idols. Don't go back to your sin, because yeah. he will surely turn his face back from you, read mm -hmm. on. Whereunto you desire again to be in bondage. Hey, and with that, we're going to say shalom, Israel. Shalom. All right. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.